Alright guys, welcome back to another M Crater lore video. So today what we're going to be working on is some wooden textures for tools. Uh, one of the things that I was uh, working on a little bit earlier um, yesterday, which uh, was basically getting the um, deep slate uh, tools made, or not tools, but the block recipes. And then I realized that we needed recipes still for the crafting tables, uh, for the basic tool table and the basic stone table. But um, in order to get that, we needed a couple other things, like we needed wooden tools in order to actually break stone, uh, which we would need for a recipe for the stone table. So uh, there was a little bit of uh, some things that we needed to add. So that's the reason why I'm adding a stone variant or wooden uh, tools for the uh, tool table. So we're going to be working on that today and uh, setting up a recipe for the actual thing. So I wanted to get a general texture thing set up for all the different types of variants and tool heads like we had for uh, the stone tool variant, but uh, this time it's going to be wood. So uh, we're going to be calling it like uh, Perif um, or something like that, like the wood type that we have. And then we'll base it off of that wood type, I guess. And we can always add more different types of wood types later on and have the same uh, basic functionality, I guess. But I needed to do this for all the different types of variants and uh, get that based on the, um, the stick item for the tool itself. So that's basically what I'm copying over. Just getting the light and then dark and then basically filling in the other colors from the stick itself. So then once I got all that done, I ended up putting importing the textures so I could basically use it in items and tools. So we needed to do that next, which was really important. So um, I created all the recipes at this point so I could basically go ahead and select all the different types of tools. And some of them were mixed in a little bit randomly with the other tools, so I had to locate them a little bit more, but um, I did find them all uh, eventually. And I think that was down to how I named the files, so it's basically just a little bit in odd places <laughs> where they shouldn't be. So I basically imported those, and then I needed the tool heads themselves, so I basically go went ahead and uh, imported them from the items folder I think I have them nested under so I need to select all those ones and basically go ahead and select all the wood ones wherever those are so once I got that done though we, we were able to move ahead and start working on the actual uh, script and the first thing that I needed to do was actually update the tags uh, the tool uh, tool tag names for the recipe helper. So basically what I needed to do was I was going to go ahead and uh, replace the files, uh, these ones right here, uh, which are the recipe helper uh, mini ones. So I needed to basically update all the tags and add new tags uh, be to add support for um, randomization for the items and stuff because now that we have uh, different another tool type for the recipe or tool table, um, it's going to need to cycle through it based on the tag uh, that we're going to be using. So I need to resort all these different tags and stuff. And I started with uh, just cleaning up the materials. Like it would have worked if we just had one tool set, but it needs to be a little bit more flexible for the. Um, the types of like expansion into other tool types and materials and stuff like that. So it I took a lot of time to actually work on figuring out a good name system for all the tools and materials and how I was going to end up linking it. So eventually what I ended up getting was a whole bunch of uh, parts that uh, aren't actually being shown right on the screen now. I ended up going through several cycles, updating the tags, and then trying other things, and then eventually I settled with a few different um, varieties of things. I have uh, one for specific heads, one for the, um, the grips, and then I have the material types as well as the tool. 
um, tags themselves. So I think I added the tools. I'm not sure if I added the tools or not. I think there's one for materials for them. So basically you can kind of see how it's updated a little bit. There's different blocks and stuff being added. And I was setting up the types of tags here. So I have an entire list that I was going on and then I was just adding the tool types or the head types to these lists. So starting with wood and then adding the stone ones just to kind of keep consistency uh, across the tag types so it's easier to find which one's which. And over time, I basically expanded that list a little bit further and ended up um, using tags rather than material types. So I needed to add material types later on because I needed a particular thing. So once I added all those tags and stuff, what I could end up doing was adding the uh, proper recipes. These are all the recipes, I think, for the recipe helper. So I needed to go ahead and update all the material names. And um, I needed to also add a timer. So the cycle of the items weren't going to update too fast. Now, I was going to do it through a task condition uh, like you see here with the uh, repeater but it turns out that it's just too buggy with the repeater part so what I ended up doing was just dropping the repeater um, for trying to search for the, um, the item if it's not the same value because for for the, at least for the moment because I want to eventually make it so it won't uh, be the same item over and over again but I need to figure out a way to do that so um, when you're switching between pages the issue is it basically goes ahead and keeps some of the tool or the materials for the previous page so testing in game I was just experimenting with it and I noticed that um, again the um, the axes and stuff like that were updating so it's like every second now and you can actually hover over the items and it will <clears throat> uh, show what kind of material it is too. So even though that it's going updating like every second, it's still going to be going through the randomly and stuff like that. So I was going to, I think at this point I was using the repeaters. So it was kind of updating between two different uh, materials, like for the thing. Uh, this obviously didn't work for things with a single material type, but... Um, Personally, I like the how it basically switches between the two items, and that's kind of what I wanted to go for, but I needed to remove the repeater, so sometimes it takes a little bit longer in seconds for it to do that. I haven't really figured out a way to sort that part out, but I knew I needed to update the uh, button recipe, so when the button is right-clicked uh, to for the recipe helper and... Uh, for the page, uh, I needed to make sure that I would uh, set the default state for the item update to zero. So this is for the timer part. And what that will do is it will make sure that the item automatically updates right off the bat. So this one is for when the GUI is actually opened and that links up with a script. But I, like I said, I needed to get rid of the repeater part so it wasn't going to show like that. And then I needed to go ahead and create all the tools for the uh, actual uh, items. So these are all the tools for the wooden ones. And then I needed to add the um, wind tool conditions, which basically allowed me to go ahead and um, make the recipes for the conditions themselves for the actual tool parts. So I needed to make sure that they were all set up for wood. And then finally what I could do is I could um, basically add all the tool heads and the actual um, tool items and the conditions for all of them into a new um, condition for the output slot. So this basically updates the output slot uh, based on the condition that we set for the items as well as the setting the item for the uh, return output. So I've basically linked it up with the original one and for the else statement I'm just calling this particular procedure in the else um, part of the if, con if, if statement. So basically it goes if else, if else, and then else, and then it runs this particular procedure which it goes through more of the um, tool sets. So this one's for the wooden one 
and then if it fails on this one then it will actually return error so it will just remove the item instead of you know having it all in one procedure and then that could cause a little bit of lag and stuff so i decided to kind of break it up into two procedures uh based on the tool set and material type so hopefully that will be a little bit better for uh testing and stuff like that and making it a little bit more stable but it takes a little bit of time so i needed to update all the um the conditions and then i needed to go ahead and update the tool items as well uh now that i got them in but um yeah that's basically what i worked on on this part and the next thing that i needed to do was set up recipe unlock functions so this was going to go through functions themselves and we're going to be using two functions uh, of uh, tags which allow us to one run the uh, basically set objectives so basically right now what I'm doing is I'm writing a line of a command for creating an objective uh, when the world is first loaded and what this will do is it'll make sure that the um, we can basically keep track of when the player uh, basically mines a certain block and what we're going to do is we're going to test if they mine um, the perif um, log and wood so basically we're going to create two objectives for each one of these and then we need one for stone as well so we're going to create one for stone and I just need to make sure that the names were set up correctly so I was working on that and the, the nice thing about functions is rather than set up a bunch of procedures that run on the world tick update side running it from functions can help with performance a little bit better so it takes a little bit more time to set up yeah but uh, you can easily set a function to through scoreboards to actually unlock recipes and stuff uh, using the give recipe command and a few other things so I have two different uh, triggers one is for the um, when the when it's loaded and then the other procedure um, or tr tag is for when it's on an update tag so uh, the the next one function that we needed to make was for the um, actual giving the recipe so I needed to basically run the execute command so we can select all entities with a score of one so basically if they have a score of one with our objective um, then what we can do is we can go ahead and basically give that player uh, using at s which basically it just selects the previous um, entity selector and we can basically go ahead and set the entity to give them the recipe that we want so I added dot 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 the three periods after uh, just because I need to actually get the recipe in so I wanted to just let myself know that I needed to add those recipes so basically I needed two recipes for both the objectives uh, for the wood and logs to begin with uh, they will unlock the same recipe though and then the other one would be for stone so basically what I needed to do from here is I went over onto my other screen and I needed to create those recipes actually yeah I needed to create the recipes first because we didn't even have the recipes made yet but um, once we had the recipes made I could basically copy the registry of the recipe and paste it under here so I needed to write our the namespace of the mod and then the recipe tag or registry so that will basically be the um, recipe that we unlock when we unlock this particular recipe so with the recipe itself the player doesn't actually have any crafting table or anything or any tools when they first join the world so we needed to go ahead and create a very simple recipe that anyone could basically craft and this will be for the tool table so once they have the tool table unlocked they can make more advanced tools and unlock uh, the stone table uh, through basically mining stone and stuff, but uh, we needed to create that recipe first So I just used two planks and two logs To basically make that particular recipe now the other one for the stone table is going to use I was going to use um, basalt, but I decided not to because it's um, pretty far down in the world and it's not as abundant as 
regular stone. So I ended up using two logs and two stone blocks uh, for the actual recipe itself, but um, I needed to add the registry. So I was just adding a note here for uh, basically when what the re the command does. So you can do that by using the pound sign and then adding text on the same line. So that allows you to kind of keep track of what the recipes are for and stuff in the function um, function list. So it really helps when you need to um, remember certain things and stuff like that. So I was just basically adding notes for each one of these tags or commands. Once I added the notes and stuff like that, I just cleaned up the um, recipe a little bit for the stone table. So I was grouping them under the same one for the uh, table type. So basically you can add like recipes under the same type so it makes sense. Uh, for example, these crafting tables are both basic ones. So I thought I would put them under the uh, like a basic table or something like that. And then I was basically just updating the recipe so I could go with stone, which will allow me to make it a little easier for people to actually unlock the recipe. So we are unlocking it when they break stone, so it makes sense that we would use stone in the recipe to actually craft. So that's basically why I'm doing it that way. Alright, so in game I needed to test to see how everything worked, so I went into survival mode and... I wanted to actually play it through as if we first spawned in this world. We already have a tree here, so I'm going to break this and see what we get. So we get the recipe right off the bat, and then we can go ahead and craft up the recipe. So we're going to need some planks for that, and then we're going to need to get a bunch of logs. So you can find a pretty abundant amount of logs in the... Thing. Now the only downside about this particular tree is it takes a little bit of time to actually mine the wood. I'm not sure if I want it to be that hard to mine or not, uh, especially when you're first starting, but uh, might adjust the um, hardness and resistance uh, later on in the future. So basically once I created all that, I noticed that there were some issues with the um, table itself, but we needed more wood for the recipes so I went ahead and broke a couple more pieces just so we had a couple extra things to work with so I needed a couple more logs just so we had a little bit more um, wood because we're going to need to make the um, what do you call it the the grip and we're going to need a pickaxe head so the first issue that I had here was the recipe for the grip wasn't working and the actual um, recipe, help, recipe helper wasn't set up so I needed to fix those before I could progress in testing the actual progress that we made so uh, after doing that I adjusted the recipe itself and then I could make the grip so grips only require a couple um, two planks where the sword now requires three so it is more dependent on the material so it doesn't need to worry about the material type so I now that I had like tools I could basically go ahead and mine out the actual stone so I went all the way over to this little cliff over here and I just mined a couple pieces of stone just to see if we got the recipe that we needed so I wanted to just mine that and yes we got our stone table from mining that so I ended up grabbing a couple pieces of stone uh, one of the things that I wouldn't mind doing is actually making a um, a furnace, just a basic smelting s station, um, and dropping stone cobblestone instead. So basically like cobblestone version of that particular stone, and then, then we can basically create a furnace from that using a 4x4 crafting table, uh, which is through our inventory. So once we had that, I needed to grab a couple more pieces of logs and I was trying to craft it in the recipe helper <laughs> or for the um, the tool table, but we needed um, stone instead. So put two stone like that and just making sure that the recipe actually does craft up the thing is really good. So once we've gotten that, I did add the basalt. So all the recipes for the basalt are now in there and ready to go for uh, that I still have the shale to do, which I'll probably do uh, next week 
but uh, we'll be working on something else uh, for sure. So uh, hopefully that was a pretty interesting video for you today. Let me know in the comments what you thought, and um, I just have a quick message uh, after this. If you have suggestions or find an issue with the mod, what you can do is you can go to the GitHub repository, go to the Issues tab, and then select a new issue. And you can suggest a idea or provide feedback for this the series and with this uh, particular form, or you can report a bug or an issue with the mod in this particular form. Uh, this will create a template for you to fill out, and you can basically name it and do whatever you want with it for that part. Uh, the bug report requires a little bit more additional information about the forge, the build information, steps to reproduce the issue, and um, information uh, about the issue. And it's already labeled automatically for the uh, proper labels and stuff like that. So uh, this is the proper way to uh, suggest features and stuff. Uh, and I will definitely take all suggestions here into consideration for the series. Often I'm looking for new content and ideas. So if you have any suggestions, this is perfect uh, for suggesting them. Outside of that, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.